My camera's not turning on. Not turning on. Okay. Does this seem like a desert to you? <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Can you be a total asshole and still change the world for the better? I'm not actually sure about that question, but there's one guy who certainly seems like proof that you can, and you've probably never heard his name. The, the most fascinating character in American history I've never heard anything about. And yes, that's John Green, an OG YouTuber and author of The Fault in Our Stars and Turtles All the Way Down, and someone who I am a giant fan of, and during this interview was sort of low-key freaking out. Anyway, John Green wrote a book with some very juicy and fascinating essays, link in the doobly-doo, and one of those essays is about this guy. Clarence Saunders. Yes, Clarence Saunders. Clarence Saunders changed everything, at least here in the United States. And to understand how, you have to understand grocery stores. Specifically, what grocery stores used to look like 100 years ago. Wait a minute, before we go on, let me just tell you something really quickly. See this? Inside of this little case are earbuds that I've been using lately. And the earbuds are made by Raycon, who are the sponsor of today's video. These are called the Everyday Earbuds. And as the sun has been coming out, and as I've been sort of trying to get back to normal, I've been exercising for the first time in a while and uh, going for runs. And when I go for runs, I listen to audiobooks. Is that a nerdy thing that I do? I listen to audiobooks when I go for runs. Anyway, these earbuds have been awesome. Unlike most earbuds, they don't fall out of my ears. I tend to have these like big ear holes. And what I love about these everyday earbuds is that they come with different sized like gel fittings. So I can just put the biggest ones on and they actually like stick in my ear and they don't fall out. That's cool. The other thing is the battery life is basically forever. Like it's like 32 hours of battery life, which is a very long time. And they're like really affordable. They're like half the price of premium earbuds that are out there. So they're affordable, they sound really good, and they stay in my ears and the battery lasts for a long time. So I've been going on runs, I've been listening to audiobooks with these earbuds and I really like them. Raycon comes with a 45 day happiness guarantee. Like they're so confident that you're gonna like these earbuds that they're just like, yeah, try them for 45 days and we like guarantee that you'll be happy. So if you're interested in even looking into these, there's a link in my description, buyraycon.com slash Johnny Harris. Please use that link if you're going to go check these out. First off, you get 15% off of these earbuds if you do that. And then also it helps support this channel when you go to that link so that Raycon knows that you showed up to them through this video. There's also a card like up here somewhere that is that link too. That is technology. We can put little cards in YouTube videos. Welcome to the future. Thank you Raycon for sending me these awesome earbuds and for supporting this channel and for sponsoring today's video. And let's get back to the story now. Clarence Saunders, what a man. So my great grandfather's grocery store in rural Tennessee was like almost every grocery store in America. It was called a full service grocery store. You walked in, there was a counter, you often handed the grocer a list and then the grocer would go and get all of your food. And then they would weigh it all and they would charge you. And often you would pay back that grocery bill over time on credit. There were no aisles. Customers usually didn't pick brand names, so brand name food wasn't nearly as important as it is now. And also, highly processed packaged food wasn't nearly as important as it is now. The first thing this guy Clarence Saunders did was he had an idea. He would later like tell the origin story of many different ways, but one of the ways he told it, he would say, I was on a train and like a bolt of lightning, the idea hit me for the future of American food. A daily battle is being waged in supermarkets all over this country. A battle for the customer's dollar. His concept for a grocery store was a store with aisles where customers themselves would walk through the aisles and pick their own food. There would be price tags on the food, which had never been the case before. And he would call this grocery store Piggly Wiggly. Wait, what? Piggly Wiggly? Piggly Wiggly. 
Why? Why? <laughs> why? That's a great question. Question, Johnny. So one time Saunders was asked about this and he answered that the name of the grocery store, quote, arrived from out of chaos and in direct contact with an individual's mind, which maybe gives you a little bit of a concept of the sort of dude he was. Some men just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> oh, that is, that is amazing. But mostly when people would ask why call your grocery store Piggly Wiggly, he would answer so that people will ask that very question. <laughs> Man, it's like the, it's like the, it's, this feels like the Old Spice commercials. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice body spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. Yes. We're gonna just be like yes. so weird and crazy that like everyone exactly. will be curious. And a huge percentage of his advertising budget went to ads that were so weird. I mean, he called the third Piggly Wiggly Piggly Wiggly the third because he felt that it was owed a certain royal dignity. I mean, it was very much like the early 1920s and 30s version of the Old Spice ads. Okay, so Clarence Saunders basically just disrupted the old way of grocery shopping. And as a consequence, a bunch of clerks, these people who used to do the grocery shopping, lost their job. My, my great grandfather's grocery store closed as did many, many others. A lot of jobs were lost in this and, and there was widespread fear about, you know, losing jobs to automation, losing jobs to hyper-efficiency which also, of course, foreshadows some current concerns. Technology today could lead to 45% of current jobs disappearing. But that doesn't make him an asshole. It, like, there are people all the time making businesses that people lose jobs on and we sort of freak out about it, but it's actually better for the world. Oh, and he was pioneering new ways of like guerrilla marketing that made people talk about him more, which was a really cool thing too. Seems like this guy changed the world for the better, and he did. But he also starts to give us signs of who he really is. So even early on, there were some indications that Saunders was a bully, that he could be very cruel to employees, that he could shortchange partners, and he was obsessed with growth. He was obsessed with making Piggly Wiggly as big as possible, as fast as possible, taking over the entire world. In fact, even when Piggly Wiggly was a Memphis-only phenomenon in the very early days, he would put on the windows outside the store Piggly Wiggly all over the world. So this gets to my question. As someone who is building a startup right now and thinking a lot about building a company, I genuinely have this question. Do you really need to be the mean bully founder and boss to make a world-changing business? We'll try to answer that question in a little bit, but first I gotta tell you the next part of the Clarence Saunders story because it's just too good not to tell. This is where we start to see a lot of the negatives of Clarence Saunders. He became obsessed with trying to prove these Wall Street speculators wrong. And as he lost control of the business, he became more and more angry and vitriolic and really hateful. Uh, he wrote about this at times quite beautifully. Like once he wrote, they have it all, everything I built, the greatest stores of their kind in the world, but they didn't get the man that was father to the idea. They have the body of Piggly Wiggly, but they didn't get the soul. And I just love that. I mean, how much do you have to believe in yourself to be like, I am the soul of this company. So his next idea isn't quite the same as the original Piggly Wiggly. It's actually much closer to contemporary grocery stores because there are still aisles where people pick out a lot of their own food, but there are also staffed counters for the deli department and for the bakery. As he's developing this new idea, he wants to call the grocery store Saunders, because of course he does. <laughs> but the people who own Piggly Wiggly are like, no, 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 no. You are not allowed to use your name in selling a grocery store because that would be a direct competitor to Piggly Wiggly and that is a violation of our agreements. And in response, Clarence Saunders decides to call his new grocery store the Clarence Saunders sole owner of my name grocery store. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's like, I didn't realize you could one up the sort of self-centeredness and like yes. snarkiness of this guy. Yes. And yes. it's just like, and then it's like, it's like, uh, again, 
he's doing this to his business. Like this is the, what is going to be out there to the world, and yet he's yeah. using it as as personal his like personal like ego fest. I love it. But that's a lot of what we see with 21st century capitalism too. Is these highly charismatic individual founders who are really lifted up as the centerpiece of the company, that it's not about the 75,000 or 200,000 employees working together on a project. It's about this one god man, you know, almost always a man. My question is now for you as the, as a person who's grown businesses and, and has led people, and, and I'm in this now more and more as I grow like a, a startup and stuff and like, Clarence Saunders was obviously very successful, like timing might have been a little bit off, but like he was very successful in disrupting and changing things and building a business that still exists today. Do you have to be an asshole to like build big businesses in, in, in the capitalistic system? Like is that, is that a prerequisite to like be hyper successful in your mind? I'm not sure. I was on a phone call once with a very successful entrepreneur person and he said, to me, you're too loyal to your people and not loyal enough to your product. And my feeling about that was, well, if that's the side that we're going to err on, that's the side I would prefer to err on. Like, I, I believe in humans making stuff together. I don't really believe in the idea of these sui generis, brilliant individuals who reshape history on their own. I mean, the truth is, like almost every successful person, Clarence Saunders was a bubble on the tide of empire, as Robert Penn Warren put it. He was riding a wave that was much, much larger than him. And I, I, I mean, he was a very bright guy, but I, I think that in the end, that obsession with growth at all costs, that obsession with, you know, winning, it ruined him. I mean, he died a he died a poor man in a sanitarium for mentally ill people. He alienated almost everyone who loved him in his life. And I don't, I don't think that's the hero's journey.